What I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm, what I did is I looked musicians over the shoulder and saw how they were producing music, and um, what was like at that time it was that the the it was foreseeable that in five years from now, from in ten years from now, the whole studio would go into into software, and so then looking at that and I saw like possibilities to make that even faster, and so we we created a, a company for that, and. Um, the nice, the the great, or the difference, the, the important thing was that it also changed the user because so far it was the sound engineer that was using the software, and now it's the musician who's using the software, and that brought a totally different software that uh, to life, and and that's what we did. Cool, and um, and so pretty much everyone in electronic music uses mm -hmm. Ableton, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so how did you go from being a, a, a music guy to doing what you do now? So maybe sort of talk about um, that, how that transition happened and, um, and what happened when you left day to day at Ableton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so I, at some point I just had enough money earned with the company. And um, I had a f um, diagnose of a tumor that made me think about what I want to do in life and what I, what I want to achieve. And, and so I, I thought about it and, and um, noticed an, 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 a felt an urge in me to do something more profoundly good. And so I took my wife, I stepped down from my position at the, at the CTO of the company, took my wife and my two, two children and, and, and traveled around the world to f like tr we tried to get as close to the poor as we could, and for example, we lived for three months in a slum in Africa, with the whole with, with the whole com with the whole family, and it was a really intense and ex experience. Yeah, and so that gave you perspective on some of the issues that people um, living in tough situations yeah. face. Yeah, and um, so how how do you go from experiencing that and living in it to doing something about it? Like, what what was your thought process? Well, the first um, the, the first thing that happened was I was overwhelmed by the complexity and the size of all these problems. Like I was, when I when I came back to Germany, I was pretty much ready to to give up and and to focus on something smaller. And then again, something I watched somebody. In this time, it was, it was at that time it was my my daughter. She was using a ma a mass learning software, and so I um, looked at her and and how she was using it. And sometimes it happened that she was uh, learning a new concept just on her own, without just the computer and her. She was just uh, six years old, and and I thought like, well, if this is sometimes happening, because there is right now there is no software you can where, where it happens constantly. You always need a teacher for that, like in between. And but I thought like, well, if it's sometimes happening, then it's probably just a question of better software to do that. And I'm. Software guy, so I thought like, well, let's try that. Right. So, so you just to sort of quantify this in terms of your journey, you started a business that ended up making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You're a nerd. You went and saw a problem. You decided to, that you needed to start to solve it, and then you built something to solve it. So you're you're truly, and the reason Burned is here is he's the use case for what we want founders pledge to become. We want entrepreneurs to make a lot of money sell their businesses or not, have it grow, and then go solve really big, tough problems using the same set of tools and skills that you do every day um, growing your business. Um, and Bern does that. So could you just, uh, in, in a minute, talk to me about what I do does and explain, explain sort of the concept behind it? Yeah, so what we do is like we, we the, the idea is you take a smartphone to a child. We start with, with very early ones, pre preschool children, and um, we expect that, or we, we, what we want to build is that the child learns substantial things like getting, like in this case, like getting school ready in math just with his app, just communicating with his app. There's no adult needed. That's the idea what we want to do. And the second thing is what we, what we, what we do is that we um, get into the environments, the really poor environments like the slums in where, we, where I lived, lived. and um, and try the things out there with the teachers, with the parents to get it to work in those environments because like the, we have to, uh, otherwise it will not be used. Yeah. So, you're, so you're iterating on product. Oh yeah. With, with the people who use it, with the people who are teaching and with parents. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, why education specifically? 
Why not, why not any of the other myriad of issues that face people who live in a slum in Nairobi? Well, it's the pre prerequisite of a lot of things, like the, a lot of social sh changes that we want, would like to see. And it's like, of course, it's like it's empowering the people. So w at, at some point, it's like the, the people will, will solve their problems themselves. That's the basis of why, why education is so important. But it's like a, also like the, what, what happens now, right now, 95% of the world population lives in reach of a cell tower. The vast majority of these people have a mobile phone, but not yet a smartphone. But in the next 10 years, they all will have a smartphone in their pocket. So that, when I realized that, it's like I thought, like, we, we don't need to do any, we don't need to bring technology somewhere. We don't need to change anything. We just need to build software. And like the, this potential of like, we can just do something with purely developing a great product and nothing else. All the rest is there or like will be there in the next years, depending on where you are in the world. It's like the, that was just so fan fantastic. And so Andreessen famously said software is eating the world, and in this case, software is teaching the world, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you take a, a, a different approach than just providing an app. You use machine learning. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you're using it? Well, so it's like as we want to have an autonomous system, we like that there's nobody who can who helps us choosing the the right exercise which is usually like if you have like commercial ex, um, software for, for for teaching it's like the t typically the teacher helps to choose the right exercise and what we do is try to like use use machine learning algorithm to to find the right the, the best uh, exercise for for every child personalized of course and do this over and over again right and so what stage are you with i do from what I understand, it's relatively early. You're mm -hmm. funding it yourself. Yeah. Um, so just to talk us through where you're at from team, product, what the future looks like. Very early. It, feel, it feels more like, like research than like a startup. And it's the, we have to find, for, for so many different problems, we have to find so solutions. So like, like a huge pile of content we, we, we still need. We will open up the system so that uh, the rest of the world will also provide. But we start, we think like we have to start with some with something that is and then sh then prove learning success. Like use like we heard it oftentimes uh, today is like use um, scientifically proven systems like uh, randomized control trials to really show evidence and and things like that. There's there's a lot of stuff that we have to do. Right. And how many on your team now? Right now in, in Germany it's 14. 14 people. Wow. Um, so what are your biggest contrasts between starting a, a, a social business and a for-profit, pure for-profit business? Mm -hmm. It's, well, it's the, 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 the problem is so much bigger and like the, so it's like the, it's, so it's not so much about this, the, the social aspect or not the social aspect because of my, I always felt like Ableton, the music software company was also extremely social because we were constantly thinking like how can we bring creativity to the world that was our purpose like how can we get more creativity out there so I think there's like if you, if you are non-profit or for-profit or something in between it doesn't matter so much it's like you the, if you in terms of social you only have to th look at like do you can you measure the the, the, the impact and that's the, the, the important thing and that's what we what we have to face here now is like the like the even like right now the the, the teachers are uh, extremely supportive of what we are doing there, yeah. but it doesn't like it's it's not enough because until we have proven learning success, it doesn't help if like if if the whole world would now use it like perhaps we could we would make a, lot, a ton a lot of money, but unfortunately if we if we can't prove uh, learning success it all doesn't doesn't matter. really matter does it. Yeah. Um, so do you have any thoughts on the skills exchange and the overlap between the two sectors? So what can the for-profit teach to the non-profit and what can the non-profit teach to the for-profit? Is there an overlap? Uh, I think it's like it's, it's, it's so near to each other uh, from my point of view because like the, we, we heard, today we heard so many non-profits who are taking like startup thinking and like all these things are, are so near to each other. So like the, the it's more like if you have a traditional NGO that is huge and just looks at, at the totally wrong things like optimizing for the donors and things like that, then it's also, it feels like, well, it's very near to how government's functioning, like also very inefficient. 
But if you look at the like the guys we, we saw today, it's like there's they are so like into transparency and, and fast iterating and all these things, and that's very near to a startup. Right. Cool. So let's um let's open let's open up for questions. My my timer is beeping. So we're not going to use Slido because um, we have a tiny thing. Um, raise your hand if you have a question. Yes. Uh, hi, Aaron Semi. Uh, so when you lived for three months with your your family in, in the slums, what was the most surprising thing you guys learned and experienced together as a family? I guess the, the, the complexity of everything. So it's like the, you like if you think like you you start somewhere and you want to change something and then you you experience that like it will never work because the systems are so complex the social systems are so complex and that's what you see there is like the when when the governments are doing things there's like they, they they screw up so often because it's so tricky to get this stuff working in those environments and that's like that was like the probably the, the most important thing I learned. So there's a, a reason why um, it's these big persistent systemic problems because yeah. they don't have easy solutions. There's yeah. no silver bullets, right? Yeah. So it's it's tough. Anyone else? Nikhil. Yeah, it'd be great to hear your thought process for how you decided you wanted to actually build your own solution for this problem mm -hmm. versus investing in or supporting something that's already out there. Mm -hmm. Did you just not believe that someone else could do it or that it existed out there already? Well, I'm a software developer, so I th always think like, well, probably I find a good solution. But um, honestly, I looked at the market and, and uh, I couldn't find anything that, that has the potential to work there. It's like if you really want to go into like these very poor environments, you have to, so have to solve much more than just the learning aspect. And I, I couldn't find anything that, that, that uh, fits there. Yes. We are not a non-profit. No, 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 no. Okay. Why did you choose to make this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I I like so much the, the the aspect that businesses have this growth engine incorporated, and so if you want to, because at the end if you want to be successful, well the the, the problem is so gigantic. It's like we have a billion of children who get really really bad education right now, and if you want to solve that, you need to have a massive scaling capability. And I think like it's like if you get that done with, with a business model, it's so much faster. And, and the other thing is like the, um, you can attract like the, 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 big, the smartest people easier. Your website, your website said you have a new equity model to do this. Could you amplify that? Yeah. So what I did is, um, I uh, when I when I started the company, so it's a for profit, but I don't care anymore about money because I have enough. So not so much, but it's like it's definitely enough to, to live for the rest of my life. And um, so I said, like, well, to use this this uh, this shares in a meaningful way to attract a lot of people, I said, like, I will donate like all the sh all the, like 100 percent of the shares to employees and people who are supporting the, the, the company. And that's what I'm doing over, over, the, over the years. I will just give it to, to them. So it's, an, it's a not-for-profit for you? For me, it's kind of, well, I'm, a, I'm also an employee. So I get, uh. I get some of them back. And I'm not sure exactly what I will do. Probably I will get them again back into the system. Well, but you have pledged against uh, I do. So yeah. I know some of what will happen to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Can you just explain a little bit more about how you're using machine learning? Um, just tell us a little bit more about what you do. Yeah. So at the like the, so the the most important aspect is when you when you like there's the, you like basically you need a huge pile of of exercises and activities that are fun for the kids and, and teaching the kids and and um, self-explanatory. But now you have like if you, so. If you want to get the kids to learn these things, you have to have very fine-grained uh, difficulty progression, and so you have you end up with thousands of exercises. And now you need to to choose for the for the for 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 the for every child the perfect pass through that. 
and therefore we, we use machine learning. I'm not so familiar with what, 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 what's going on in health, so. Anyone else? Can I just add, I forgot to add to my question, the comment, uh, thanks for building ASIC. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. So, Bernd, if you had, had to, to sort of round out today, if you had, uh, so I know there's no silver bullets and there's no key takeaways, but if you had to give us a, a key takeaway about your journey, right, um, and, and what you would encourage everyone else here to do when they have the tremendous success that uh, obviously they all will, what would it be? Travel. Travel. Go to the places, see them firsthand, and then it will anywhere. You will, like, if you, if you are connected to this, you will, you will act. And if not, then do something else. It's, it's totally fine, everybody does. But I'm pretty sure it's like, if you see the, if you see the, 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 the world, you will, you, will, you will do something. So go out there. Go out and do it. All right, guys, um, big round of applause for Burns. Thank you. Thank you.